Hello, it's Corey here with the Mentor Engineer, and this is the FEA tip you're not going to like. FEA is is a waste of time, in my opinion. Uh, it is it is very helpful, and it should be used for its intended purpose: checking your work. All right, don't start off with FEA as your primary design driver. It is super slow and let's just face it, you're a better engineer than this. You don't need to be wasting your time doing FEA uh, as something other than a check. All right, so in my view, a des the design process should start off with you doing hand calculations and lots of them. As a good engineer, this is gonna take a long time at the beginning, but as you get better and better, you can do a, a, a specific section between five and 15 minutes at the most. FEA, on the other hand, is gonna take you five minutes uh, for a very small run, but as your runs get bigger and bigger and more complicated, you might be able to get you know, one run per day. And you can't just wait you know, weeks and weeks of time just making incremental changes. So I say this, uh, you know, you're not gonna like it. Doing hand calculations is not fun. People aren't going to like it, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's not fun, although I do like it, so it is fun for me. All right, so if you find yourself somebody who likes doing this and uh, glim onto them and maybe you'll like it too. All right, so let's talk a little bit more in depth about how to use uh, FEA. All right, so the first thing when you're going to do is, is set up your model and do your FEA. Uh, the first thing you want to do is turn that deflection way up at the end of the first run and look through that model make sure you got all your fixtures make sure you got all your loads your contacts and uh, whatever other uh, sliding components anything like that that you may have in your model make sure those look right make sure your deflection is right a lot of times you got some parts touching that should and you got other parts that aren't touching uh, or should be touching that aren't uh, putting pins and bores together if you don't use the nominal dimension. A two, two inch pin is 2.00 for the bore, for the bearing, everything like that. So don't have a two inch pin that goes in a 2.002 inch bore. Uh, just not going to work. So get all that right. Uh, make sure, turn up the deflection, look at everything. All right, and then, only then, do you start to look at a hot spot. And the immediate thing is, oh, I can fix that real quick. Uh, I want to do another calculation. Don't do that. Resist that urge. I've been sucked into it. It's very hard not to. That is a giant time waster, especially when you have runs that are over 20 minutes. It's going to take forever. What you need to do at that point is go back to your hand calculations and ask yourself, uh, do I need to do another section here? Have I already done a section here? Is my section where it's hot not quite lined up with the other section? Uh, you'll find the answer to this is probably, I never did a section here. I just guessed. I thought it would be okay. Um, or maybe you missed a stress concentration factor that you should have included. Maybe you got a bad stress flow transition that you didn't see before. Uh, so now you just need to look at, uh, you know, how do, I, how do I hand calc this up and just see if you're in the business of, or in the ballpark of, of just where you need to be. All right, this is a very tough thing. It's, it's not a fun thing. Like I said, it's the FEA tip that you're not gonna like, and it is to do less FEA and more real actual engineering work. So I implore you, when you see a hot spot in your FEA, don't run more FEA. Do a hand calc. Spend that five to 15 minutes and get that right. Uh, go ask a buddy, you know, what should I do here? Don't run at more FEA because you are going to get sucked into a cycle of just continually doing FEA. So don't do it. And that is why this is the FEA tip that you are going to hate. <laughs>